Yo, what's up, you tactical mother humpers? You know, the human body, uh, they keep saying it's a, a precision, very uh, sophisticated machine. Well, how come it doesn't know when to stop storing fat? Could someone uh, tell me, ask me that? Someone explain that to me? It does everything right. It tells you when to shit, tells you when to stop shitting. Uh, you know, it tells you when to, uh, when to eat, tells you when you're fucking full. Stop eating. But how come when it collects fat, it doesn't stop collecting fat? It just collects and collects and collects. Doesn't it know that you're overweight now to stop collecting? Push the excess fat out the hiney, please. What's going on with that? Oh, that gets on my nerves. Anyway, um, I got a few things I want to show you. First thing I want to show you, from Mission First Tactical, made in the USA, right here. I got a single point sling mount for my Colt, my M4 Colt uh, 6920, as you can see right here. And uh, the company's called Mission First Tactical, right here. I'll put their link under the video, because this is all, I screwed up the packaging. What I wanted to show you is um, really cool, man. Um, instead of me having to take my beautifully staked castle nut from the factory Colt, which they do exceptionally stake it well. You can tell by, if you look at, I looked at other guns the way they were staked. The Colt is really staked. It's really, uh, I can't explain it. It's like a square stake. It's very, like, really nice looking. I really don't want to break them off. So what I did was, I want a single point sling mount that's not going to take up a lot of space, that's not going to look like a big giant block on my buffer tube, that's not going to look like an aftermarket add-on. I want it to look uniform with the gun, I want it to be slim, strong, and never come off. Mission First Tactical has this particular single point sling mount right here. Okay, here is the uh, Colt 6920, and there is the single point sling mount, you see it on there? And it's got, uh, you know, ears on both sides for any way you want to attach it. Uh, I was going to do a video putting it on, but it's so friggin' easy to put on, there's no reason for me to do that. Okay, guys? There it is. It's about a quarter inch wide. It's very discreet. It wraps around. It slides on the buffer tube, mil spec or commercial. Remember that. So you don't have to specify. And what it does is it's a ring, it slides on, there's a screw here. Take the screw out, put Loctite on it, put it back in, and screw it down until it squeezes nice and tight. It's very, very secure. There ain't no way in hell that's going to get loose. I mean, you can, sw you can swing your grandma off there, and it will not get loose. Awesome single point sling mount from Mission First Tactical. You guys get that? <laughs> Blow up your friggin' screen and look at it, because I, I can't reach the zoom. Because I don't have a remote, because my channel's very unprofessional. Okay, there it is. Looks beautiful. That's something I wanted to achieve for a long time for my Colt. Okay? Please don't fall. Okay. So, that's looking good. Um, you know what? I think I better put this down here, because I know... I know, I know, it's going to fall if I start banging on something or something. Now, uh, next thing I did, I ordered a sight, a real sight from True Glow for my Ruger 2245. Um, I love this 22. This 22 is so nice. If you guys want a good, reliable 22, these are only like $315. They're cheap, but they're made with high quality. That's what I like about them. Got the new Magpul 1911 grips on there. There's a big scallop for the thumb. It's got a 1911 magazine release, which I took out the uh, uh, mag release, uh, not mag release, the what's the name, the safety for the mag. This way, uh, when you push the button, the mag comes shooting out of there. Bam! Doesn't get stuck anymore. And uh, you can pull the trigger with one in the chamber now, which is something that I want. Uh, I'm not telling you to get rid of that safety, but I like it. Because I'm trained to do this 
three times, two times, four times before I pull the trigger because uh, the doucheness has been flushed out of my brain when I was a beginner. So I don't need that magazine safety in there because this gun, when you take it down, you have to pull the trigger. All right. Um, I ran about over 200 rounds of CCI Mini Mag hollow points through it, and it runs like a perfect little tack hammer. It's a great running gun. The only problem I have with it is the front sight kind of sucks. And if you see in the video in the past, you'll see what I did. I put the front sight in a drill press, drilled a pilot hole, filled it up with fluorescent paint, which is fine, but it's still not precise. It's not a precise front sight. And when you're shooting 22, you're really looking for precise, precision shooting. Okay? That's what I do. So what I did was, I went on Google and I found this sight from True Glow, and it's a high vis sight. What I like about it is it's very low profile and slim. It's not a big hunk of like this. It's like a big hunk of, chunk of steel on there. So it's like anything else. It's just like, um, especially you, you steel guys. You know when you're laying out steel, when you use your chalk line. You know when you sharpen your chalk, you want that line to be as thin as you can. The thinner the line is the more accurate your measurement will be. It's the same thing with a sight. The more narrow the sight is, the smaller the sight is, the more precision you can shoot. Well this is, you know, to me it's too big and blocky. The outside of the housing around the sight is, is big and it covers up the bullseye. So what I did was I got this from True Glow and a high visible sight. You guys see that? And I want to throw that on there. Very reasonable. It's like 25 bucks. Okay, it's air aircraft aluminum CNC machined, easy to install. Uh, it's it's friggin' awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna throw that on, and then let you guys see it. But first thing I want to do is clean this thing. Uh, the biggest thing about this gun here is, oh my God, it's so hard to take apart and all. It's not that it's hard to take apart. It's, it's because other guns are very easy to take apart. It's really not that bad. There's just a lot of steps. But because of the reliability of this gun and how nice it looks and how nice it shoots, uh, the aggravation of taking it apart, it definitely it's worth it because it's such a nice 22. I love these Mark III 2245s, Mark II, Mark III, whatever ones you got. These style Ruger uh, 22s are classic, classic. So, I'm going to be honest with you, I mean, I haven't taken this thing apart in probably a year, so I forget, I totally forget how to do it, but I'm not afraid to take it apart. I know what I have to do, I know I have to pull the slide back, you know, let it go and pull the trigger, that's the first step. I know that i got to pull this out here, this little jackknife thingy, that's the mainspring housing. I know that goes up like that. Am I nervous because I might not know how to put it together? No, because I'll figure it out, because I, I know the basics. So I just want to push that down. I'm just going to try to just pull it apart without, because I haven't done it in a while. Right on camera, right in front of you guys. Now that's coming out a little easier. Before I had to, I had to tap it with a mallet. So it's starting to break in. You just take that out like that. And then you, you, can't, you can't mess anything up. You really can't. Okay? Now this is the bolt, you just pull the bolt out, because this needs to be clean, because I got like one, two, three hundred, it hasn't been cleaned in three or four hundred rounds, and it's still relatively, not that dirty, because 22s don't make a lot of dirt, but it, it's dirty enough it needs to be clean. So there's the bolt and the recoil spring, and uh, if I really want to get in there and clean it good, i got to take the frame off. And the frame is just, uh, when it breaks in, usually you can just kind of push it forward, see if I can do it yet, even with my, my girly hands. No, you're still gay. So what I gotta do is just uh, tap the back of it. So what I'll do is I'll put my finger, thumb in the hole here, wrap it around here, because I don't want it to go flying, and just give it a couple taps. You can't hurt it because you got a mallet here. There it goes, and it comes right apart, just like that. Now, for when I get when I put it back together, I'm, I'm you know I'll find I'll figure out how to do it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not that complicated. The whole thing is, when you put it back together, is this block here needs to be down. 
and this little dingleberry here, I forget what they call it, some kind of strut, that has to be in the down position after you get the mainspring housing in and when you swing it in. That's really the whole, the whole bag of nuts is right there. So I'm going to get this all cleaned up, I'm going to put it back together, I'm going to put the sight on it, and then I'm going to let you see it. Um, no sense of me videoing that. Just this, The point I'm trying to make here is don't be afraid to take this gun apart. You can't break it, you can't hurt it. You might have trouble putting it back together because it has weird steps that other guns don't have. But you'll figure it out. It's just not oh, a big I just deal. got done cleaning up this uh, 2245 Ruger. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not real sure how to get back together because it's been long. But I'm going to actually let you, you know, you know, let you see an unrehearsed me not being too sure uh, what it looks like. You know, it might be a disaster. Now, I'm trying to remember how I did it. Um, wipe all this dirt off. It's pretty dirty. So here's the frame, just to show you, I'm not real experienced at putting this together and back together, that I'll eventually get it back together, I might struggle, uh, I, I kind of know the fundamentals of where things need to be, uh, I know this, there's a block here and it locks in here, so I know this goes on here, first thing you do, and I want to push this hard, and because it's still not broken in yet, I know I have to tap that down Till it's past, till the barrel's past the edge of the frame. So I'm going to do that. So, and I'm telling you, my my condition is so tender that it's very hard for me to do this. Okay, it's past it, but I'll give it one more whack, two more whacks, just to be sure, because I know that has to be all the way back, or all the holes won't line up, and you won't be able to get this in. Because so that's on. Now, I know the second thing I have to do is put the bolt back in, pretty sure, nice and clean. Okay, this goes in, you got to make sure that block in there is down, which it is, I don't want nothing getting in my way. And then this should go in. Sometimes you got to, okay, it went in pretty easy that time, sometimes you got to, You'll, hit, you'll feel it hit, and you just gotta, sometimes you have to push that release down to get it to go in. Okay, that's, that's almost a battle there. Now remember, I know that little ding -a has to be facing down before I sweep this in. The hardest part for me is getting this back in up all the way into that hole because of my, my horrible hands are terrible. So what I want to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this in first, okay? Make sure that little thing is out of the way. Okay, I got that in. Now, you think you're you think I'm almost home? Nope. Because this is what it does to me. Every time I get to that point, it, it, it's stopping me from swinging down. Let me pull this out. This little thingy here. Now what I have to do is hold it up, I remember that, pull the trigger, which that allows this to go in, and at the same time, that little strut that hangs down has to go into the pocket of this, and then when I push on this, see I don't feel any spring tension, so I know it's not right. Okay, there's the spring tension. I can feel it. It's pushing back, so now I flip that in. And it's back together. Now, did you see me putting the mag in, taking a mag out, putting the mag in, taking a mag out? You know, I don't have to do that. Maybe because I took the, the magazine safety disconnect out. I think that has something to do with that. You don't have to, it makes it easier to put back together. This is put back together now. So I'm going to do a function to check. But as you can see, I haven't done it in a long time and I forgot how to do it. I just had a little idea how to do it. And I still managed to get it back together. Not out of the woods yet, let's see if I uh, did it right. Okay, so I'm going to pull this back. That's a good sign, because if it ain't back together right, you can't pull that back. Okay, let me take the mag out. Release the bolt. Make sure uh, the trigger works. Yep. Trigger again. Trigger reset. 
There it is, back together. So I, the only reason why I'm doing this, it's not to like I'm like trying to show off or anything. I'm just trying to let you see that even if you don't do it all the time, you'll get it back together. But you definitely have to be in a calm mood, which is uh, rare for me. So now what I'm going to do is um, take that front side off of there and put the new one on. Okay, and then uh, we'll show you what it looks like. So here's what it looks like now. See here? Hold it, hold it. Backwards mirror camera, I forgot. See what it looks like now? That's the sight that's on there now. It's pretty hard to shoot like dead bullseye with this, this sight on here. So I'm going to put on the True Glow. What the hell's the name of this? Rimfire pistol, I know that. Fiber optic front sight. There's no, there's no uh, special name for it. It just says fiber optic front sight. Alright, All right. the good news is I'm going, to sh I'm going to just talk while I'm putting this on. Um, I did remember to thread lock the screw that was on there. Now when you get this sight, you're not going to get a screw with it. You're going to have to use your original screw, so be careful. What I'm going to do is, there is a little thread lock on there, but I'm going to put more. Because it's old thread lock. Just a dash. Very good. Now what's good about this is it'll automatically, the front sight is coved on the bottom like this, which means when you lay it on there, it can't do this. So once you lay it on there, line the hole up, tighten it down, it won't shift side to side. Okay. That looks good. So, how about we, uh, dude, how about you get the screw ready and stop being a dork? The magnet screwdriver, baby. Best thing ever, ever, ever. You gotta love that. So, it's pretty much this simple. I can see. Line the hole up. Very, very gently stick the screw in. And I won't shoot this, well I ain't going to shoot it anyway, but if I wanted to shoot it, I will wait 24 hours to shoot it. Now I'm going to screw it till it tightens down. I'm not going to take it home, because I want to double check and make sure it's plumb, which means perfectly straight up and down. Okay. Now I'm, I'm looking at the middle of this, the screws that are tapped in the bottom and right down the sight. I'm just going to try to just look at everything and turn it down, see if everything lines up. Man, that's like, whew, what a difference. See, that looks good. So what I'll do is, it won't move because it's coved, but just in case it does, I'm going to hold it and give it a crank. Make sure it doesn't turn slowly. Okay, one more little... Just like that. Don't have to be Hercules doing it. Remember, it's only a 22, and we got thread lock on it. It just has to be as tight as you can get it without struggling. How about that? Okay, I didn't mar the screw up. I didn't mar anything up. That looks fantastic. So there's the difference between the other sight and this sight. See that sight? Kind of catches the light by the back black background. If you could see it. So much better for so little money. Better than my homemade job, my little paint and all that shit I was doing. So now, that's like, man, I can keep both eyes open, but no problem and shoot with both eyes open because I can see that sight so well. The back sight's just black, so just kind of a guide. That is phenomenal. Wish there was a way I can make you look down the barrel like I'm doing it, but I'm lazy, I don't feel like doing it. So. Ow. See how my sights are lining up? Right on that little flyer's bullseye. Bang. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be nice. So the most important thing about this is 
what's great about it is you don't have to worry too much about it uh, cocking left to right as you're tightening because it's coved underneath the same shape as the barrel. It's rounded off. That's it, man. Here it is, the uh, Ruger 2245 new fiber optic sight. I think it's going to work out real nice. All right, guys. Uh, hope this was some good information for you. And uh, that's all I got. Take it easy.